Um, Kenneth, obviously your version of Hercule Poirot says, uh, I've got the mustache, it's big, it's great, it's very different to David Suchet's. Um, was, that, was that the point you were making? Uh, Matthew Pritchard, Agatha Christie's grandson, the first question he asked was about the moustache, so I know that it meant something to the Christie family. I'd heard that uh, Agatha Christie had been, uh, had the thought that maybe Albert Finney's moustache in the 1974 film was too small. Oh, right. And so the we <laughs> felt that we could probably afford more facial furniture. Uh, so Poirot could, as he does, and he, he, he knows this is the case, he uses the, 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 the moustache as a mask, he hides behind it, he observes from it, mm -hmm. and people dismiss him because of it. It gets a big reaction. It's a reaction that means, as Daisy Ridley's character says in the novel of him, she said he was a perfectly ridiculous little man with that silly moustache. Mm -hmm. He was the sort of man one could never take seriously. So, so now you're growing one too. Now I'm growing, it's, <laughs> Mo it's Movember, and I'm doing a... Uh, oh, you'd be doing for charity. It's the beginning of my little Movember moment. Oh, one Wonderful, oh, how go. great. Um, Hercule Poirot has got um, a sweetheart called Katerina. Is she Russian? Who is she? In the books, he fell for a Russian countess who was called Vera Roskov. He said of her, she had one blue eye, she had one green eye. Ooh, I could serious. not look at her, I could not look away. All right. So, uh, so now Katerina, said, so is she a second cousin of Countess Roscoff? Will she appear in another film? Will there be another film? It's up to you. <laughs> if you want to know whether there is a secret Russian sweetheart for Poirot, yeah. you have to support this film in such numbers. We the 20th will. century we definitely, Fox will. We definitely will. You watch us. <laughs> Who would you say uh, would be the best liar out of the entire cast? Who would get away with murder? I think Willem Dafoe is a he's got a great Why poker him? face. He just he can just he can just stare you out. You he can dare you, dare you to disbelieve him. And also because <laughs> it's such a strong face and he's played some great movie villains as well, he's kind of double bluffing you because you think it must be him. Oh, but it so must be him that it isn't him. Oh, but then he's so clever, maybe it really is him. So he's treble bluffed you because he's uh -huh. Willem Dafoe and he's brilliant. And uh, what makes your uh, reincarnation of the novel contemporary? Why is it uh, up to date in 2017? I would say the emotional rawness that lies underneath the story. Revenge runs through murder on the Orient Express. And the reason why people feel the passionate need to revenge uh, some act that has caused them suffering um, is powerfully there and it's moving and it, it makes you understand a little about the poison of deep grief when people lose people there is uh, the possibility that a civilized person becomes a primitive and dangerous person. Also your Hercule Poirot is more energetic, he's fitter than the other ones, he's almost James Bond of all the Hurricane Poirots. <laughs> <laughs> well, a friend of mine uh, said of, of this Poirot, he said he's a cross between Plato and James Bond. He's got that interior life. But also, as a bloodhound, as a seeker for the truth, it just, nothing gets in the way. So it's not as if he naturally wants to perform heroics, but if something needs to be jumped across, if he has to defend himself, if he, have to, he has to in, in, indulge in, in physical fighting. He then, just does it. He'll do, yes, he is. He's just like that. He's like an exorcist, can't. He, he can't help himself, it's just, that's what he does. Leave thumbs up, comment below the video and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you very soon. Bye bye, take care.